Yo, what's up? Today on the Independent Grind, I'm going to give you three tips on how to succeed as a black business owner. Yeah, be right back. Yo, welcome to the Independent Grind, the show that gives inspiration and tips to creative minds and entrepreneurs through music and film. I'm your host, Dramatic Gamble. Today, like I say, I'm going to give y'all three tips on how to succeed as a black business owner. So, uh, without going too deep in it, we're going to just go ahead and start. Number three, my third reason, my third tip on how to succeed as a black business owner is make sure that you can be found. With today's technology, if you have a business, most likely you have to be on the internet, you have to be on social media. Because the old ways, I'm not saying this no, don't work, but the old ways are kind of going out. Like for example, the newspaper. The newspaper is not in print as much as it was. Our paper have went from, in Mobile, Alabama, the papers have went to coming out from seven days a week to I think three days a week now. And so where you could advertise in the newspaper, which you still can, but it's not gonna be seen as often as if it was on the internet. Magazines are not printed like they are. A lot of people are going online. Just about any business you can think about that's successful, if you could just name, if you could just, if I could say name five of the biggest companies you know. Let's say Apple, Netflix, Coca-Cola, Walmart, Redbox. I'm just naming some. All of them have an internet presence. Every last one of them. And I just named them at the top of my head. Now, you pretty much have to be on all the sites, you know, um, if you're trying to pull in some business. Um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, sometimes Twitter. You have to kind of play around with it and see what works for you. Now, what works for me is Facebook, Instagram, and a little YouTube. Because even though I'm not a a partner in YouTube in the YouTube program because they the requirements have changed I still do these videos and I put I always put a commercial in between these videos I do I DJ I have music out carpet cleaning company so what I like to do is throw a commercial and put it in between these videos as I'm talking you know as I'm giving value in these commercials in these videos I'll say you know what let me throw a commercial in there so they'll know that I do this. Sometimes people cannot even be thinking about the service that you offer, but when you keep putting it on their mind, they'll think about it. This week, I'm gonna tell you what I did. I said, I'm gonna go on the internet, I'm gonna go on Facebook, Instagram, and I'm just gonna post every day about my business, but I'm gonna give a special. It was a limited time only. I gave a DJ special, I gave a carpet cleaning special for a whole week. Now, all of this is free. I kept posting every day. You have to January 31st to get this deal. You can't can't miss it. January 31st. Don't forget. I got mm, maybe four DJ gigs and three carpet um, deals just from that alone. Just I got um, carpet appointments and um, yeah, I think four DJ gigs and three carpet appointments. Now some of these people wouldn't even think about getting their carpet clean. But when they seen this and other people share my post, they say, you know what? I might need my carpet clean. So I always advertise, use those hashtags like on um, Instagram and Facebook. Some people follow hashtags. On Instagram, you can follow hashtags. So when somebody posts something that say Mobile, Alabama, I'll see that in my news feed. So a lot of that stuff do work. Um, I always advertise and I always and, and try to do commercials. Content is key these days. People like to see video. So that's real important. So number two, make sure that you are open when you say you're gonna be open. And I'm gonna tell you a little something about that. I have been to businesses, black businesses, I'm not saying white businesses don't do this also, but it's this car shop I used to go to. On their sign it says, we're open from eight to five. Okay, you pull up at eight, they're not there. You say, okay, maybe they running late. But once you do that two or three times, nine o'clock, Somebody show up at 10 this day, 10.30, but on the gate it says 8 o'clock. If you're not gonna be there till 11, change the time to 11 to 5 instead of 8 to 5 or whenever you shut down, you know? And I think that just come to uh, just being professional and watching your business. So 
always make sure that you're going to be open when you say you're going to be open. Now, just a few facts. Blacks only account for about 13% of the population. But when it comes to business, we only account for 7% of all the business. A lot of that have to do with the population, but we have entirely less businesses than white people out there. And a lot of times it's harder to find our businesses because you can say, well, I want to support black businesses. And you type in, I want to go to a black nail salon near me or in my area. Sometimes it's hard to find because a lot of the black businesses are not on the black websites. And so studies show that black entrepreneurs are far less likely to receive bank loans compared to white entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs that do receive business loans, they often pay higher interest rates. And because of this, a lot of your black businesses don't get off the ground like they need to. Like they need to. So that's one thing we should do is try to support the black businesses and black businesses, we have to give people something to support. Now, a fun fact about money, it's not a fun fact, it's just a fact about money. A dollar spends 28 days, about 28 days circulating in the Asian community. In the Jewish community, it's 19 days. In the Hispanic communities, seven days. And a dollar only circulates for about six hours in the black community. We need to do better. So that's saying that we are the group of people that keep our money less than any other group of people. We are quick to spend our money instead of putting it, saving it, spending it with the community. And I know, I believe this to be true because a lot of times I notice when people get paid, it's like, man, I'm about to get paid, I'm about to go catch the check, I'm about to hit the mall, I'm about to go do this, do this, do this. And a lot of people come up to me and say they want to start a business. I'm like, you have to try to save and sacrifice and try to get business and save your money to start a business sometime because a lot of times the bank loans, they don't give you the loans. And anytime somebody come to me with an idea, now I tell them, I say, man, look, write it down. Just write it down. When I, when I first started my cleaning business, I wrote everything down, things I needed, uh, how I was gonna try to run the business, and I just wrote everything that I thought I needed. And I think that's what you gotta do. So um, when I come back, I'm gonna give you my last tip on how to succeed as a black business. Yeah, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. My number one reason, uh, my number one tip on how to succeed as a black business is to be professional. You know, this kind of goes back to some of the earlier points I was talking about. Be open. When you say you're gonna be open, be on time. Have a lack of bad attitude. And these are things that you can use to be successful as a black business. Try to work with the customer and don't be so quick to catch an attitude with a customer. You know, sometimes as black businesses, we may, and not just black business, any business, we may do wrong. So, and for the people, I don't think we should go off on black businesses because you had one bad experience. You know, I see if the people are just real nasty and mean to you, but if they try to fix the problem, you know, try to understand because a lot of times we go to Walmart and we don't get the best service. We go to Target somewhere, we go to McDonald's, some of these big corporations, and we'll get one bad experience there and we'll still go back to them, we'll still go back to Walmart. So, I mean, Everybody's not perfect. And so sometimes you may have something that may not go your way and just because it's a black business, the reason I'm talking about this is because I noticed that a lot of people bash the black businesses when something don't go their way. Say, oh man, that's why I don't mess with black businesses. I never support them again. Now if it was something where a business was just being low down and just outright did you wrong, I can understand that. But a mistake, something didn't go right, that happens. It happens at Walmart all the time. You buy a microwave and it don't work. You uh, you be in Walmart and it's, they have 20 lines, 20 lanes, but only one cashier is working. And so you'll see 10 people walk around in the store and then you say, hey, can, do you, can you tell me what the, all the milk is on? And you catch an attitude and people catch an attitude. And so, but we still go back to Walmart. So don't be so quick to talk about the black businesses because a lot of times we don't have the resources that the other Business, businesses do 
And uh, but it's up to the black business to also be professional when they make a mistake, apologize, and try to fix the situation. So uh, this is the Independent Ground. I'm a dramatic gambler, and I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. Peace out. I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out. Yes, I'm black, I'm proud of it, I'm black and beautiful.